Thank you for joining. My name is Aran. I'm the co-founder and chief product officer at Firefly. And uh, before that, I was the head of DevOps at Aqua Security. And in this discussion, I'm going to talk about infrastructure drift. Um, I will explain the reason for drifts and also show you uh, some practical ways uh, to monitor uh, for uh, drifts. So let's dive in. Um, anyone here try to introduce uh, Kubernetes cluster? Right. So uh, having new infrastructure in your environment, there is plenty of ways to do that. So in case of Kubernetes, there is uh, like the hard way deploying the binaries, not very recommended, but very helpful if you like to learn a uh, deep dive of the essential of Kubernetes. But the ecosystem provide some automation around uh, the deployment. There is uh, COPS basically allowing you to deploy Kubernetes in AWS. There is a kubeADM, which is a very nice uh, automated tool to provision new cluster uh, even locally. And there is the cloud console way, which uh, what we are referring as a cl click ops. You are going to the cloud uh, uh, UI, like the AWS console, and with few clicks, you are introducing new cluster uh, and EKS cluster. But in this specific discussion, I would like to focus on infrastructure as code, which is uh, the most recommended way uh, to introduce a uh, new cluster. And the reason for that is because when we're using IAC, we are basically treating infrastructure like any other piece of code, and we are basically enjoying uh, all of the advantages like code reviews. You can have a, uh, CICD pipelines with tests for your infrastructure. And also, we, you are keeping the template in your Git repositories, so you are enjoying versioning and also the option to uh, rapidly deploy the infrastructure uh, at scale. But there is uh, a challenge when using infrastructure as code, and it's called infrastructure drift. So before I will explain what exactly is infrastructure drift, I would like to share with you a few numbers. So when Firefly uh, examined uh, the issue of drift, we identified that 90% of the large deployments that use infrastructure as code have already drift in place. 50% of the drift were unnoticed, meaning the cloud engineer didn't know about the fact that he have a drift in the infrastructure. And if you ask me what is the impact of drift, it's eventually there is 100% impact. It's either uh, a small toil activity that you need to resolve it, but in other cases, and it's depend on the drift type, it can have a security issue or reliability issue. So what is basically infrastructure drift? Is when you are deploying infrastructure with infrastructure as code, at day zero, at the time that you are deploying, everything is allow aligned, like the cloud deployment, and the manifest is equal. But over time, due to some reasons that I will share uh, a little bit uh, on in this discussion, the real state of the cloud is basically become different than the one that you have on your source control. So this is basically drift. And I can give you some real examples. So what you see here uh, is a Terraform manifest. Terraform is uh, an infrastructure as code compiler, very popular and I will use it uh, in this uh, discussion as the, main, as the main tooling for infrastructure code. So what you see here is basically a description of AWS IAM policy. And in this specific policy, I would like to have uh, a DNS list and a DNS uh, a read-only kind of activities. But when I examine the real state of this IAM policy, for example, I will go to the AWS console and check whether it's equal to the configuration, I will see there is a, a bit difference here. So the desired state will be a read-only, a list resource and a list host zones, but the actual state is somebody add an asterisk, basically giving a full access to this specific IAM policy. Another example, if I will uh, take a Kubernetes as, a, uh, as an infrastructure, 
So right here I have um, a manifest, an Elm, a manifest of a role that have a specific capability of get, list, and watch. Again, this is a read-only kind of role. So any user or a service account that is assuming this specific role supposed to have only a read-only uh, access. But if I will go to the real actual state of the cluster using a kubectl describe command, to this specific role, I can see there is a different. So somebody elevate this, uh, 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 the verbs that this specific role can uh, access. So we have patch, create, update, and delete. So in my manifest, in my source control, I think everything is read only, but in the real state of the cluster, I have also write capability and even delete. So um, this, in, this is an example of a Kubernetes drift. So what causing it? There is few reasons, and I would like to highlight six of them, like the, the main reasons that causing drift. So first of all, manual change during emergency fix. So if you are utilizing infrastructure as code, everything need to go through your CI/CD pipeline that eventually uh, uh, taking the infrastructure from your Git repository and deploy it to the cloud. But when you have an emergency, something is broken, you have an on-call duty, 2 a.m., somebody need to fix that to mitigate that issue. And if this issue is eventually uh, uh, due to some configuration of the infrastructure that need to be changed, in most of the cases, the engineer, the site reliability engineer, the DevOps engineer will go directly through the cloud console, through the API, and do the change in order to mitigate the issue. So emergency fixes, if they are not going through the CI CD, they are causing infrastructure drift. Another reason is the stuff that you already have in the cloud. So if you are utilizing infrastructure as code, but it's something that you introduced recently, like in the past year, in most of the companies that are not like a new startup, there is also legacy stuff in the cloud, stuff that were created before infrastructure as code become popular. So those are, we are calling it like the unmanaged assets, the cloud legacy that uh, doesn't have any infrastructure as code coverage. Another reason that causing drifts is automated application. For example, if you have a security department in your organization and they are deploying system uh, that are doing changes in the cloud, like CSPM uh, uh, systems, in some of the cases they have permission to alter configuration. For example, if they have a security uh, a system that have a permission to change security groups, for example, if you describe the security group that have more uh, permission, then the CSPM uh, system is changing. They are not doing it through the infrastructure as code pipeline. So the SRE, the DevOps, the cloud engineer using infrastructure as code to deploy security group, but the, CST, the CSPM uh, system is changing the security group, basically creating drift between the actual state of the cloud and the stuff that you have on your uh, Git. Another reason is the partial adoption. So if you would like to enjoy the full advantages of infrastructure as code, the recommendation is to deploy the entire cloud through the infrastructure as code, and then basically give the permission only, for example, to Terraform to, to provision stuff. So any engineer, uh, like the typical engineer, doesn't have an access to the workloads and the infrastructure, and then you are basically avoiding the drift. But in the real state, um, or at least the, the organization that we uh, talk with, only certain kind of workloads, like the new project, are being done with infrastructure as code. And because there is different kind of teams having access to the, uh, to the cloud console, drift uh, happened. Another reason is the change between the environment. So if you have a production environment that is highly sealed, nobody can touch it uh, uh, beside the Terraform uh, configuration, what about the staging? What about the development environment? So what we saw is basically the production environment is sealed, but the staging environment is more friendly for developers. Developers have access to it, and then they are doing manual change 
that is not described in the infrastructure as code, and then they create in basically discrepancies between the environment. So you think that you, you said, okay, I don't have any drift in my production, but the production is not having uh, all of the configuration that need uh, to be done in order to have a proper uh, configuration for your workloads. And uh, the last reason is the misalignment between the infrastructure as code tool and the cloud API. So because the cloud is still going very fast, new services are always introdu introduced, and new API version, there is al always a chase between, for example, the Terraform or the Pulumi uh, uh, version to the uh, version of the cloud, and sometimes team not have um, the discipline of keeping up with date. So if you're using an older version of Terraform that is not aligned with the current API version of a sp specific uh, service, for example, uh, an S3 bucket, this is something that is changed over time, so the teams that utilize in infrastructure as code, for example, Terraform, they need to make sure the Terraform version, the runtime, is always up to date. And if they are not uh, making it up to date, we see that sometimes drift happen due to that reason. I'm going back to the example of Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, basically there is two dimension of drift that can happen. There is the infrastructure of the cluster, like the control plane, the storage, the uh, security group, and all of the stuff that related uh, to, to the cluster itself. And then there is the configuration of the workloads inside Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, you basically need to, mo to watch for drifts for those two dimensions, for the infrastructure and also for uh, the, the workload and the manifest that you have inside Kubernetes. So what you can do about uh, drift? First of all, make sure you understand about uh, the specific challenge of using infrastructure as code uh, and uh, get the awareness of drift. And then understand that not every drift can be risky. For example, if an engineer is uh, accessing the cloud and add tag to one of the resources, it might introduce drift because this tag is not described in infrastructure as code, but it's not something that can impact the reliability or the security of the, of the infrastructure. So drift is something that you need to handle, but not every drift is something that can uh, cause issue to your system. Then put some monitoring on uh, your infrastructure to make sure that you will know in real time when drift is happened. Because what we see that if you are, don't know about the drift, even if it's not causing a, an issue in real time, the next time that you will try to provision a new version of the infrastructure or an, or an update, you will get a conflict. And then you need to stop and resolve the conflict in, instead of moving fast and deploy the changes. So make sure you have the right monitoring in place, and I will show you a demo of how to do that. And then once you have that monitoring, you need to make sure that a certain type of drift will be routed to a certain teams. If you have a large scale deployments and you have a security team, so a drift in a security uh, uh, component like a security group is supposed to be routed to the relevant team. So if you are implementing that monitoring, make sure to route to the specific individual that is responding, uh, that is uh, responsible of that portion of that infrastructure. And then, when you know about drift, there is a basically two ways to mitigate it. One of them is either aligning the cloud with the infrastructure as code, so it's basically overriding the manual change that was done. So for example, if I'm using Terraform, I can run Terraform apply again, and the manual change that was done, basically the drift will be eliminated. But not all the drift have this, this uh, kind of intention. Sometimes, like in the example that I mentioned, you are doing a change directly in the cloud console, but you want to keep the change. The change is basically a fix in some of the issues. You would like to align the code to be with the, uh, with the cloud. So it's, it's 
very hard to uh, create automation of uh, mitigating drift because each drift is basically can go two ways, either aligning the cloud with the code or aligning the code with the cloud. And a very simple way uh, to watch for drift is basically using Terraform itself as, uh, as a monitoring system. So Terraform plan is basically the command that is showing you the output of, uh, uh, of the desired uh, configuration. And if Terraform plan is de detecting a drift, is basically giving you an output and a specific exit status that say, I see there is a manual change done in the cloud. So you can take this approach without introducing new tooling to your environment and just running it in a cron job or in your CI CD pipeline uh, in a scheduled job and make sure you are getting alert uh, once the, the drift is happening and not waiting for the next cycle of deployment and then stopping everything and try to mitigate the drift. Another approach that is more popular for the Kubernetes users is using GitOps. So GitOps, we can have like an entire discussion about GitOps, but in a nutshell, it's basically saying you are putting a controller in your cluster that is listening to your Git and doing a reconcile of the state from Git to the cluster. Meaning, if you're using GitOps, there is no option to get drifts because only if you are introducing uh, the change to your source control, to the main branch, then the change will be applied to the cluster. If somebody have a kubectl um, uh, permissions to the cluster and it will change configuration, then this operator will basically overwrite the changes because it will not be aligned with the source of truth. In this case, is, is, is the Git branch uh, uh, that you are choosing. And there is a, a two project, two open source projects that are very popular in this specific GitHub space that call Argo and Flux. And both of them are awesome. I use them uh, and um, they're basically a very simple kind of way uh, to implement in your cluster and making sure only the stuff that is mentioned in your Git repository is going to be deployed on your cluster. It's very good for Kubernetes workloads, but if you are more worried about infrastructure drift outside of Kubernetes, like if you have um, other kind of workloads, functions, database, databases, other stuff in the cloud, so GitOps is less relevant in that specific uh, kind of space. And I'm going to show you a, a live demo of how to use uh, Terraform as a drift uh, detection monitoring system. And it's very easy. Not something that I will recommend to use in a large scale, but if you have like um, a small uh, deployment and you just want to experiment with having um, uh, notification about Drift, this is something that you can do even today with very few lines of uh, scripting. So in my case, I have a Kubernetes cluster. And I deployed just before I came uh, to this talk an Nginx, an Nginx uh, uh, service in my cluster that have a deployment and a service with the type node port. And I use Terraform to do that, and I will show you uh, basically the manifest that I have. So this is a typical Terraform workspace. So um, in Terraform, I basically can describe the workload that I would like to provision in a very simple uh, syntax called HCL. And uh, even if uh, you don't familiar with Terraform, it's very easy to understand uh, what I'm going to introduce here. So I have a Kubernetes deployment. I give it a name, uh, Nginx, and basically here I'm describing what kind of deployment I'm going to have. I'm going to deploy uh, this uh, container image with this version. And then I have another Terraform file that is describing my service, basically uh, the component in the cluster that is exposing my uh, uh, workload outside. And in my case, I use node port as the type of the service. There is several types of services. And then what I did is basically Terraform apply 
to uh, create this configuration. And if I will run Terraform plan, Terraform plan will basically scan the current configuration and scan the real state of the cluster and tell me if uh, everything is matched. So in my case, because I don't have uh, a drift in place, I'm getting a very uh, uh, nice output of no change. The infrastructure is matched, the configuration, and everything right now is awesome. So I would like to uh, write a very uh, few lines of code that basically we will do this Terraform plan uh, and let me know if uh, a drift is happening. So I will create a new file. And I will use here um, a shell script, basically a shell script with few lines. I will use bash as um, the shell environment. User bin and bash. And what I'm going to do is just to run the command terraform plan. And I will give it few arguments to, to make my life easier in this script. For example, uh, detailed exit code, which means if there is a drift, it will end with a specific exit code uh, of uh, the number two. And it will basically help me um, to uh, to detect only when drift is happening and not other kind of issues. Also, I'm... Thank you. Detailed. Also, I'm going to output uh, the Terraform uh, plan into a file. So in case there is a drift, I will have uh, the output in order to print it to the screen. So I will call it out.plan. And just to see that everything is working, I will save this file. Moni monitor shell. And let's see. OK, I'm going to give it execute permission. Great. So the first line of this monitoring tool is working. So what I'm going to do next is basically output um, this uh, uh, command into uh, a dev null. So it will not basically spam my uh, console output each time I'm running it. And now I'm going basically to check the exit status of the command and see if a drift was detected. So. I'm going to check whether the exit status is equal to two. And again, two is basically mean drift was detected. This is uh, um, um, because I added this specific flag that say detailed exit code. And in case it's equal to two, I'm going to print to the screen drift detected. And I also would like to have more information about the drift, so I'm going to do Terraform show and basically print that out plan so I will understand exactly what kind of drift happened. Terraform show out plan, and I will close this block, and I would like to run it continuously, so I will put the entire block in a while loop. and basically wait 20 seconds between each iteration. So what I have here is a script that can run uh, uh, over time. It's basically each 20 seconds will run Terraform plan. If the exit status of the Terraform plan will be two, it will be printed to, to the screen, drift detected, and will show me uh, the exact drift. And I can even tell him to break the loop in case of that, so it will not run again, just for you, just for the demonstration. And what I'm going to do right now is just run it 
So I have it here in the background. Okay, so in another terminal, I'm going to create a drift. So this is a real uh, kind of real life scenario. I have a kubectl permission to my cluster. And as you see here, I have this service called nginx example and with the type node port. And I would like to expose it to uh, the web so the user can uh, access this nginx cluster. But I'm not going to do that in the, the right way of changing the Terraform configuration and then run a play again. I'm going to do it manually using kubectl just to create the drift. So I will do kubectl edit service and the name of the service is nginx example. And with this command, I basically in the edit mode of the configuration of the service. And here I can see the type, the type that was described in code as a node port. And I'm going to change it to load balancer. Okay, let's do kubectl get all just to see. And I see that it was changed and I'm going back to my, my monitoring. And you can see that I have this output. Let's go and scroll. Drift detected. It was really near real time with iteration of 20 seconds. I, it's almost immediately once I created its drift, I got this output. So drift detected. And I see the exact drift, the Terraform uh, plan basically telling me that somebody changed node port to load balancer. So this is just to uh, show you, like you can, with a few lines of code, you can get uh, uh, this kind of monitoring system in place. And what I will do next, um, because it's the, the output is here to the screen, it's not that useful, I will put here like, send slack message and once drift detected you basically get it uh, to your slack or page or whatever kind of uh, alerting system that you are using and just to conclude everything a uh, few takeaways from this discussion so i highly recommend to implement drift detection if you are using large scale deployment with infrastructure as code and you have a lot of teams provisioning stuff into your cloud, then you need some sort of monitoring because you would like to learn to understand in real time. You can use Firefly, you can use uh, Terraform plan script as I just show you, and there is a few bunch of open source tooling that are available as well, like Drift CTL and kubediff. This is more specifically for Kubernetes. And if you are worried about configuration change in Kubernetes, then the recommended way of mitigating drift in the first place is to use a GitOps. So you can use either Argo CD controller or Flux, which are awesome tools uh, that always will reconcile the Git with your cluster so nobody can do any change. It will do the change, but the reconcile system will basically override the change uh, near real time. And if you have any questions, this is the time. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, do you have some experience? Uh, and th thank you for the great talk, uh, by the way. Uh, do we have some um, experience when not using Terraform? Uh, for example, you mentioned the tool Drift uh, CTL yeah. in your slide. Does that work, for example, with a basic cloud formation stack, just with a AWS CLI? Yes, so Drift CTL is basically uh, working uh, with uh, Terraform and Pulumi. I'm not sure if it have uh, integration with uh, CloudFormation, but CloudFormation itself have a drift detection capability. So it's something that is embedded in the CloudFormation compiler. So you can just 
uh, configure that if somebody doing a change directly in the AWS console on a cloud on a, something that the origin is was cloud formation, you can get alert out of that. So drift detection in cloud formation is in CDK. It's relatively uh, built in in AWS. Great. <laughs>